Hello and welcome to this short video in which I will be demonstrating how to use the new Domain to Partition configuration tool to export a domain from one WebLogic server instance and create a partition that represents that domain using the new WebLogic Server 12.2.1 multi-tenancy capability. In this video we will export a domain specifically from WebLogic Server 12.1.3 this domain has deployed within it a sample application called the Conference Planner and an associated data source. So we'll export it from that particular version of WebLogic. We'll then have a look at the domain to partition archive that's created. Then we'll move on to using WebLogic Server 12.2.1 and here we'll use the WebLogic scripting tool and the import partition command to create a partition from the domain to partition archive. We'll then start the partition and access the application to verify its functioning as it was in a 12.1.3 domain. Finally, we'll then use the WebLogic console to perform the equivalent partition import operation uh, to demonstrate how the console can be used to fulfill the same task, but also to demonstrate that one domain within WebLogic Server 12.2.1 can actually host multiple independent partitions. And in this case, we'll have two instances of the same application, Conference Planner, up and running, but accessible as different context routes and running as different applications essentially within uh, the WebLogic server process. With that, let's move on to the demonstration. The first thing I want to take a look at is the WebLogic server 12.1.3 domain that I actually have up and running. This domain is called Conference Planner. It has a data source configured, which looking at here is configured to connect to a local Derby instance uh, with a conference database. I can also look at the application deployments and see here I have an application called Conference Planner. I can click through and I can actually test the application. So this is a, a quite old Java EE6 application example, but it's running and deployed on WebLogic Server 12.1.3 as is appropriate. You can see that it's a very simple application and it's essentially showing me the list of sessions that was available at Java 1 in 2011. I could create a user account and basically build out my conference itinerary utilizing this type of application. So what we have here in a sense is a WebLogic 12.1.3 domain with a data source and an application deployed to it. And we've seen it up and running. Let's go ahead now and actually go through the process of converting this domain into a domain archive that I can then import into 12.2.1 and automatically create a petition out of it. So I'll stop the server there. I'll then come into the new tooling that I've created called Depict or Domain to Petition Configuration Tool. This consists on the client side of a jar file, uh, which contains some Java code, obviously, to uh, help facilitate an export. It also has a couple of scripts there for either Windows or Linux that helps me execute and run the utility. In this case, I'm going to use the export domain for petition and I'm going to use the, the Unix or the Linux script at this point and all I really need to do with tell it is the Oracle home that I'm using which um, is the source obviously of the binaries etc for this particular version of WebLogic and then I'm going to give it the domain that I wish to export so here 1213 and I think I called it conference planner yes that was right so what this is going to do now is it's going to uh, whir away and it's going to go ahead and inspect that domain and it's going to extract all of the information that is portable from that domain and put it into one of these domain to petition archives for me. So that'll include configuration of data sources. If I had JMS resources, they would be configured, security realms, um, and also any deployed applications. There are some uh, attributes I can specify further to the uh, export script. Uh, to control whether or not I want to include application bits, whether or not I want to use um, a secure key file to further encrypt um, the attributes, etc., that are supplied within this archive. But at this point, I've just chosen to use the simple, the simple output.
So now if I look in the outdoor, I can see at this point I've got, oh, if I go into the outdoor, I can see that I've got a conference planner .zip file. So that is essentially the extraction of the domain, including the application bits. And I've also got an override file in JSON format that would allow me to go ahead and change some of the names or some of the settings of the various resources from this domain um, so they will be picked up and used when I create the new petition. I won't bother with that now. I'm just going to go through the, the simple case. All right, so the very next step is to go ahead and now perform the import on the 12.2.1 domain to create a petition from this 12.1.3 domain. Once the export operation has been completed, the next task is to perform an import into a 12.2.1 domain so that we create a petition from the original source domain. In order to do that, I'm going to use the WST tool and its new import petition function. So first off, we're going to need to start uh, a 12.2.1 domain. So we'll just start that up. There we go, that was very quick. So we're up and running there. And then from this directory here, and we can see I have my conference planner uh, domain petition archive, I'm gonna launch WST. So I'll do that from my 12.1.2 installation. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is connect. Now the command I'm going to use is one called import partition, if I spell it correctly. And there's the help for it. So we can see that the import petition takes in, in terms of parameters, the archive file name, um, a petition name, uh, a boolean, whether or not I want to create a new resource group template, and optionally the path to a key file. So we're going to do that, and I'm actually going to assign the result of this operation, because it's an asynchronous operation, to a variable that I can inspect afterwards to determine whether or not the, um, the operation succeeded. So there's the path to the zip file, I'll call it conference planner. Um, I'll go true and none. So we've gone ahead and I've executed from WST the import petition operation. At this point, let's have a look and see what the result of that was. So if I do print result dot state, so state two equals that the operation was a success. I could look into the petitions directory and now I can see I have my conference planner petition. I can also, if I get the command right, I can also do a um, use WST and the uh, operation start petition wait to start it up. So if I do start partition wait cmo.lookup partition conference underscore planner. that's going to go ahead and start that petition for me. All right, so that's from WST. Let's now go back into the console and have a look at what it thinks I have in terms of my environment. I'll log in. Here you can see down the bottom there that this is a 1221 uh, domain that I'm working against. Over in the left hand side here I have my tree structure and I can see the domain petitions. Here is my conference planner petition that I've just imported. You can see that it's in a state running. We can see that it's created a resource group 
And it's also got uh, some associated default targets that enabled me to uh, front this particular petition with a specific URI. So those things have been automatically created. So I'm going to switch through into my petition. I'm going to look at the deployments. And here we can see is the conference planner app that came across. I'll go into testing. And now notice here that the conference planner app is deployed um, using the same uh, context route that it had on my domain, but now it's fronted with an additional URI, which is the URI, the virtual target for this particular petition. So if I go ahead and click this one now, we can see that the application is up and running in exactly the same manner that was on my 1213 domain, but now deployed as part of a 1221 multi-tenant petition. I have all the same capabilities and functionalities that I had in the original uh, domain uh, running on 12.1.3. So that shows how we've been able to export a domain with the applications, with the data sources configured within it, and bring that over and import it directly as a petition on my 12.2.1 instance. As a final piece of the demonstration, what I'll now show is how WebLogic Server 1221 multi-tenant capabilities enables multiple independent petitions to be created within the same domain. In this case, I'm going to use the exact same domain petition archive and I'm going to import it as a completely separate petition. That's the path I need, create new, and we're going to call it demo cp2 as the domain petition name. Clicking OK, I've gone ahead and as you can see, I've imported a completely separate petition. This petition will contain the conference planner application and it will also contain its own instance of the data source. If we now go back to the petition and we start it, come to the control, and we click start and we'll just wait for that to start up. One of the things I will point out here is you can see that the default targets are different for these two petitions. If we click in environment and look at virtual targets, we can see that I've got one virtual target which has a URI prefix of conference planner that we've already seen. And we can see that the second petition that I've created has a URI prefix of demo CP2. So the access to both of these petitions and thus the applications that are deployed with them is completely separate. And isolated, I should say. I'll come back into my deployments now. We can see that conference planner in this petition is now active. We'll come along and test. You can see down here that when I'm going to click on this, I've now brought up and I've accessed this application utilizing the new petition demo cp2 which here you can see through the uri that i've used to access it i still have the other petition running as you would expect deployments click into here for testing and we can see that this was my prior one so if we launch that there we can see that in this case conference planner I'm able to see the data and work the application. And over here, I have my second petition with the application deployed where I can access it in exactly the same way. So there we have. In summary, what I've done there is I've exported a 12.1.3 domain utilizing our new domain petition version tool. I have then imported uh, that domain as a petition utilizing WST and access the application. And then following from that, I've used the WebLogic console to perform the same import operation and create a separate independent petition with the same resources in the same deployed application. With that, uh, I say thanks very much for listening. Um, hope you got something out of this and good luck.